Hello everyone. So now we are going to continue from where Professor Ashi left off from. So we have created a directory that's going to contain our application. So let's start from here. Okay, we have created our directory that's going to contain our, our whole project. So this is this is it. It's called a student profile. So what we are going to do is let's open up the terminal, the new terminal. Then we are going to initialize our project, our node project. What you do is you type npm in it. Okay, there are some basic questions that appear about the package name. I think I'll leave that as that. Enter. The version we shall leave at that. Then the description. I think not, it's not important at this time. Now our entry point. Yeah, we're going to use it as index.js. We could change that too. Okay, the test command git repository. Then the author. Let me give it an author of that. Okay, the license. I'll change that later. Okay, I think that is fine. So I'll hit yes. Okay, as you've noticed, there's a new um, package.json file that has appeared. Now this here, uh, it arranges our dependencies as we are going to see later on. Okay, now we're going to create our entry point, which is the index.js. As you can see, it is listed here, index.js. So let's create it. So go to new. So I'm going to call it index.js. Okay, that's fine. Um, now we need to we need to create our dependencies that we shall need for this project. One of which is Express, that will simplify our work. So now to install Express and the rest of the dependencies, this is what we are going to do. We are going to type npm because they are not packages install I'll give it a save flag express to start with the installation happens okay it's about okay now if you've noticed it has been added among the our dependencies okay that's fine I guess then uh, let's go on now, via index.js, let's set up our app. This is what we are going to do. We are going to require the dependency that we have just installed, which is the express. So to do that, this is what you do. Const express equals to require express, as simple as that. Sorry. Then we create our app of this. What does that mean? We are going to call our app app const app equals to express. This right here defines our application. Okay. And then let us access the listening listening property in our application to listen to a port. We are going to set up a port. Uh, first of all, let me let me get let me create a variable const. Let me call it port. I'm going to give it an arbitrary value. Let's say 2200. That will be our port over there. Then let's do a listen. So to access the listening method in our app, we shall say uh, app dot listen. Okay. Then we provide it with our port, the variable up there. Then we provide it with a callback. The callback it's going to it's going to help us know whether our connection 
is successful or not. So in case our connection is successful, it's going to run this. Okay, okay, uh, console, sorry. Okay, it's going to run this, console, not log. All right, so uh, listening, import. Okay, oh sorry, let me, there's a mistake here. I'm using the Baltic characters. Okay, now let's test whether our app is running. This is what we are going to do. We are going to come here to the terminal and we are going to type node, then the, pack, uh, the package name which is index.js, index. Next word, yes. As you can see, we're having a feedback from our terminal that says listening on port 2200, so that is nice. Now, there is a better way of uh, running our uh, checking on our listening automatically, of which we haven't yet installed a package, a useful package called Nodemon. So, what we are going to do is Nodemon helps us to always, always do a live reload on our project. That's why we don't have to always keep restarting our app. So I'm going to require that. I'm going to let me exit out of the out of the terminal, the listening command C that exists out of it. All right. Then I'm going to install that uh, package. So I'll say npm install with the save flag uh, node mode. That is about to finish. Okay, it has been added here. So now let us configure it. So under scripts, we're going to add another script that uh, will tell NPM to start our project automatically. So I'm going to put a start command nodemon uh, index.js. That's all we need to. So now every time we're going to review our project and run our application, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to come here and type npm start and our project will set up automatically. Okay, now let's go back to our index of JS. Now we are going to adopt the MVC. So let me arrange our my project structure. Now right here, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it uh, modules. This is where we are going to fix all our models concerning our project. Then I'll also create another folder. I'm going to call it uh, routes. This is where we are going to include all our routes concerning this application. Then All right, then uh, we are going to have our another directory that's going to contain our views. That is uh, our HTML and pug. It's a new folder. I'm going to call it views. Okay, so now let's start with uh, our routes. Okay, I'm going to create a new folder. A new file, sorry, a new file in the routes directory. I'm going to call it uh, users.js. I'm going to include, uh, I'm going to require express as a dependency in this file.
Now within Express, there's a useful method called router. This is going to help us establish our routes of our applications. Now let us do some basic testing of our application. Now to be consistent and uh, let me try putting some comments so that you guys can follow. So this, this is what we are requiring. Uh, the required dependencies. And this setting up setup of uh, router. Then down here we're going to set up uh, router handlers. Okay, so now let's start with some basic uh, methods, the crowd of operations that we are going to look at. Now we're going to start up with the with the one that will display our form, the student uh, registration form. So to do that, we shall do this. So we shall have router accessing the router we just set up up here. So you say router dot get. We establish. Uh, the route which is going to be slash form then we create a callback which takes in two parameters there's the request and then there's the response okay now let's respond with the with some simple text so we are going to access the response send method Let's give it some arbitrary uh, sentence here, which says, uh, this is home. Okay. Now let's, uh, after doing all this, you need to make this available throughout your application. What does that mean? It means we need to export it. So an exporting command would be module.exports equals to routes let me call it router okay then in our index.js which is our main folder our entry point over here we are going to require that router so this is where we require routers and uh, give it a constant let's call it uh, user uh, router oh sorry this uh, let me remove this sorry uh, let me call it user router Let me call it uh, route uh, user router. I'm going to require okay. I'm going to require then I'm going to set its path. Uh, it's via route slash uh, user. Okay. Now, we have to use this as a middleware in our main entry point, which is the index.js. So I'll say here using the imported route. This is what we are going to do. We are going to say app, which is our main app, dot use. Now we're going to set a prefix to access our routes. 
which will be a slash for now. Then we are going to set up to use the route we've just imported. User route. Now let's test whether this is operating. So what we do, let's open up uh, a preferred browser, Safari. A new tab. Okay, uh, localhost. Localhost uh, 3200. Okay, oh, that is a different route, so it's supposed to be slash form. Oh, so now, as you can see, we are getting the text we set up in our route, in our route directory. Okay, okay, let's go on and set up the other ones. So back into our route directory. Let's set up uh, a post that is going to send our form details into the database. So we're going to set up another route, router dot, but this time it's going to be a post. I'm going to give it the same uh, route, which is slash form. Oh, I could change it to add student. Let me make it more add uh, student. Okay, then this is where we get the callback. So at this time, I'm going to respond with a text that says this is posting to the database. database. Okay, then let's set up another one that uh, displays for us the prompt. Router dot get. Okay, then uh, the route. The route, it's going to be slash prompt. Then it has a callback uh, request dot response. Let's respond with a message. Uh, this is um, a prompt. Okay. Then the the last and final route will be for viewing the profile. So router dot get slash uh, view profile request response dot send a message this is the view file route okay let's test all this from the browser and see whether they are working okay now this let me remove this pressing let me just leave it at that okay let's go to our browser now, right now we are at uh, slash form so let's try and see if we change this to add uh, slash add uh, student Uh, okay, uh, what's happening? Add student, I think I'll be typing around. Just a minute. Add student. This. Okay, okay, uh, let's... Uh, the reason that's why it's not working is because the ad student has got a post, 
a post method and this uh, the browser normally use, works with uh, the get okay let's try the prompt okay you can see we have the prompt message then uh, the final one which is a uh, view profile slash uh, view profile oh yeah we get our message but this is the view profile okay uh our dummy routers are set and they are running so now the next step is going to be uh The database. Let's connect the database and see how we can send uh, data into our database and retrieve and all the rest of the actions. Okay. Inside our model, okay, we have, uh, when you check on our models, there's a file called models. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on a different project. <laughs> okay, this is it. Sorry, I was on a different project. Okay, so uh, under our models, we are going to create. Uh, we're going to create a, a file. Now I'm going to call it a uh, user model .js. This is where our user model and uh, schema will be defined. So now, first and foremost, we need to require a dependency. Uh, it's called mongoose. So back to our package.json. Let's stop. Uh, let's stop the listening from our terminal. So we are going to npm install with the save flag uh, mongoose. Mongoose is going to act more of like a front end to our MongoDB. So there. Okay, it's included. Uh, Mongo's 5.9.6. Now back to our models, uh, user model of JS. Now we need to require the dependency. So Mongo's equals to require Mongo's. Okay. Then there is a method we need to access within Mongoose called schema. So I'll const uh, I'm going to call it schema equals to mongoose dot schema. Okay. Okay, so now okay, so this uh this is going to be uh, requiring Mongo's dependency and it's over there. Okay. Then we need to set up our schema. Now, when you're setting up our schema, we need to reference to our form what what the database will be consuming from the form. Now, looking at our form, we have form fields, which are the, the name, uh, the, the student name, the date of birth, the gender, and so on. Now, to set up our schema, a structure to our model, this is what we are going to do. We are going to, okay, uh, let me check on the PDF, sorry. Uh, okay. okay, let's look at our form. So this is our entry form. So as you can see, we have the user, the surname, and the given name, the gender, date of birth, country, the name, place of residence, and all that. So this is what will be contained in our model, and therefore we have to include it in our schema. So let's start with surname and given name. Okay, 
Okay, let's go back to our project. <clears throat> now let's uh, give it. Let's give our schema a name. So I'm going to call it user schema. Then I will uh, create a new instance of the schema. New schema, and then uh, that. Okay. So our first uh, field will be the surname. So we have surname. Okay. Now we can give it. Uh, we can give it a set of properties. For example, the type. The type. Uh, it's going to be a string. Okay. Then we could make it required such that if an empty field is submitted to the database, it will not be accepted unless it is filled. So we can give it a required to um, set it to a true because uh, by default, required is set to false. Okay, that's our first field. Then our second field is a given name. So we have a given name. <coughs> so we have a type of uh, it is a string because it's going to be accept accepting strings. We could set a uh, required property to uh, true. To true. Then our third field will be gender. Now gender, it, uh, the fact that we have only two genders as of now, that is male and female, we are going to give it a property of enum, which is enumerating, which uh, makes us declare variables that are accepted. So I'll first set up the type to a string, and then there's a property called enum which takes an array of values. The first one is a male, then the second one, which will be female. All right. What's the third one? Okay, let's look at the third uh, field. Uh, there is date of birth, and then place of residence. So comma. Okay, so... Uh, the date of birth, we call it that. Now this is going to be of type date. Okay, so the type to date. Then place of residence. Mm, another field place of residence. This will be of type string. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at the other field. This email address, uh, skills, and project. Let's include the field. And the email address. Uh, which was going to be a string. Okay, let's give it uh, a couple properties. Uh, type string. Then <clears throat> okay. Then uh, let's set it's required uh, to true. Then uh, we could give it. Uh, yeah, I think that is all. Then we have. Uh, Let's look at it, another field, which is skills and then project. Skills and then project. Skills. Okay, it's going to be of type. Okay, string. Uh, then project. 
public field and we'll type string. Now these two I won't uh, put them to required because uh, they could be submitted without. Okay, our schema is set up, so we need to we need to export our model out of the schema. Let's create our model out of the schema first. So I'm going to create a constant and I'm going to call it user model. Then Mongo has got a method called model. Now the first instance it takes it's that of the model name, which happens to be the collection name. So I'm going to give it user model. Then the second argument, the parameter takes is the schema, which is going to be the user schema. This is what we declared up here. And this is what proceeds the database as a collection all right so now I'm uh, back to our routes directory we need to require the model because we shall be working with it from here now up here I'm going to uh, require a model. So I'll give it a constant. I'm going to call it user model. Because to require, okay, okay, this is its path models user model. Now I'm, uh, I'm, I forgot to export. This is importing it from this side, but I need to export it from this side. So exporting it, this is how you do it. So we'll say uh, module dot exports equals to user model. So this makes it available throughout the whole application. So when we go back to our routes, this is fine. Okay. Okay, uh, now that we've set out all our routes and our model, I think, uh, yeah, now the next, uh, we are going to connect to the database, the MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database type. So now I'll go to my main project and uh, we are going to do all that here. So we are going to continue from there. Thank you.